would like to talk about accounts payable and accounts receivable in Vienna Advantage. Now this is a very important area. Uh, all the cash flow of your company depends on your receivables and um, handling your payables as well. And I would like to show you the capabilities of Vienna Advantage with this regard. And when we talk about accounts payable and receivable, um, the trigger of payments or receipts can be either ordered, orders, um, based on which you receive maybe some advance payments or it could be um, invoices based on which um, you could receive payments in a single installment as, as a total or receive um, multiple installments. And we have Advantage has the capability to define various payment terms as well as various uh, payment methods. So let's have a look at the payment terms initially. And um, here we have defined a few payment terms inside the system which can be applicable to um, orders or then also invoices. So um, let's have a look at one of the payment terms. Now here we have a payment term called 100% in advance. This means basically um, that the full amount has to be paid in advance and it is marked as an advance payment. And uh, we also have other uh, methods where we say um, 2% uh, 10 days and net 30 days which this basically means that um, you can the, the net due date is in 30 days after the invoice and there is no advance and um, after the invoice is raised but if you pay within 10 days you will be able to receive 10% or 2% discount in that case and um, you also have some other schedules uh, or you can also plan schedules of payments whereas you say okay I have a payment schedule and you can define a schedule whereas you say for example there are three schedules in this case uh, the first care would be uh, 50% um, and which is due in 10 days and then to, after 20 days another 25% and um, after that after 30 days um, another 25% so you can build up these schedules um, what you also can do is of course that you uh, consider certain fixed due dates whereas you say it is a fixed due date of a certain month or it is um, we should consider the next business day as a due date after um, considering the net days also you have some uh, grace days or some document notes um, which you can print in this case also on the uh, on the invoice basically so we can use these payment terms inside orders or even inside invoices so both are uh, whether it is it's an accounts receivable or accounts payable on both sides these payment terms can be applicable. Now let's have a look at the payment methods. So we are also able to define different payment methods in the system. And um, let's have a look at the payment method. So here basically you can define um, all sorts of payment methods and um, here we have defined in this case three payment methods and let's even define a new one and uh, which would be uh, let's say bank transfer or um, direct debit let's say bank transfer which could be a manual method so this would mean that the customer uh, would make a manual transfer to your bank account and I can um, use it also on the both sides even on the supplier side and the base type for that um, would be in that case uh, the wire transfer which I'm taking now the base type is relevant for, for the logic of it and we define it as a manual method. We also have EFT based methods which means um, in case you are at the payable side you can make an uh, electronic fund transfer in that case by linking to the bank and um, you could also define that um, you can send this uh, payment by uh, inserting it into a batch which can be processed by your bank or it can be a single uh, one by one payment that you, you would like to consider in this case I'm choosing um, single another interesting thing of course is the bank transfer is is it pushed by the sender so whoever is sending the money is it um, is it uh, triggered by the sender or the receiver can trigger it as well so in a case of a direct debit where you are um, getting the money or, or pulling the money from your customers bank account um, there of course you can say pull by recipient but in this case I'm selecting uh, push by uh, push by the sender. You can of course make it uh, make a currency over there that is limited to a certain currency. But in this case, I'm not doing it. So you can define any number of payment methods which you could use in your invoices as well. 
Now let's um, have a look at um, the invoices where these payment methods are used. So I'm opening a customer invoice in this case. And let me open one of the existing invoices which I have over here in the system. So I've chosen this invoice now and um, I see that this invoice is completed and uh, which means all the fields are grayed out. I cannot change anything in this invoice anymore. But I see what is interesting for me is that I have 50% immediate payment term and 50% in 30 days. Now when you create an invoice, um, the system automatically creates a payment schedule. Now let's have a look at the payment schedule. In this case, we have a payment schedule with two different lines. Based on the payment terms, there has to be two payments and uh, each 50%. So the amount due in the first as well as the second payment is 167.97. And in this case, I can see that um, already ha there has been a payment on that. So there's a payment ID where I can zoom to that payment ID um, for against that payment schedule. And I can see also that the second payment uh, or the second schedule the payment um, is not yet done, so there is no payment ID against that. We have also very nice reports, of course, to view um, what are the outstanding, so I'll come to that in a short while as well. And additionally, also, we have allocations, which means uh, payments done against invoices are allocated as well automatically if there is a reference, So, and the allocations are posted. For instance, if you have an advance and later on, um, the invoices or uh, the reference to the invoices is taken then automatically the allocation can be done into the system as well. Um, let's have a look at uh, another one. Now in this case um, there is a hundred percent immediate payment and let's see yeah there is another one called with three schedules after delivery so in that case the invoice um, has a total grand total of 202.18 and um, there are payment schedules whereas uh, the initial uh, payment schedule is 50% and the amount due is 101.09 and the remaining two uh, respectively equal and um, we can also view whether the payments have been done in this case none of the payments have been submitted to us of course we can um, we have the same logic on the accounts payable and receivable side so that we know and we can project how is our cash flow in the coming period so we can always we always know what is the payment schedule date when are we getting the money and of course in case we are not getting the money we can put this whole thing into a dunning which which also is available inside pn advantage now there is another view to see of course also my receivables and payables in a very quick and user friendly manner um, we have a payment form now this payment form keeps track um, of my receivables and payables. Now in this case, um, the system has loaded um, all the payment schedules with respect to current receivables. So these are the upcoming um, payment schedules where I expect some payment, which means it helps me to projecting my uh, incoming payments. And uh, I see all my schedules based on which date um, these, these schedules are planned to be paid. And on the other side, I have also here on the payable side all my um, schedules that I can uh, see and um, based on invoices, based on orders, based on maybe a credit memo, etc. where I need to return some money. So I can always view uh, my upcoming schedules and, and project my cash flow based on that. Uh, on the left side, I can filter it based on a certain organization. I can also filter it based on a certain business partner. So for example, I would like to search for all the schedules based on Wayne Enterprise so I can see that and uh, I can remove the filter here and see all of them and also I can filter it based on payment methods you see the new payment method bank transfer um, is also showing up in the list and I can also see based on status for example the payment is awaited or there was a check which has bounced where the bank has rejected a payment it is already in dunning it's already in progress it is overdue is it received so you can use these filters to um, filter out uh, certain schedules uh, which you would like to see. Um, all right, and then of course based on due date and based on transaction type on certain invoices or based on certain orders. So you have here your data, whatever is coming in, and on the right side also, which is interesting to see, is that what is your current uh, cash position, where you can see your bank accounts, what is the position of money in bank accounts, which is uh, being shown here. Whereas also you see your cash book status. So on the one side you can see how much money do I have available right now and how many payments uh, do I need to make. 
and of course um, this form allows you to also make quick payments so in case you are may having here now in this case accounts payable you can select single payments or batch payments and make these payments directly from here so um, you can see also that uh, this is a card payment this is an expected check payment etc so based on that for example if I'm selecting a um, payment which I would like to make here um, I can select the options I can for example say I would like to make a payment from this bank account and um, I see okay this is the due amount and what is the pay amount that I would like to do and the system is also able to actually print checks uh, directly from the system equally also you can use other methods like uh, making a cash payment from here directly um, also we can make batch payments so batch payments are very interesting for uh, transferring some files to the bank and getting a receipt uh, uh, return response and then based on that making the payment now also you can split payments for example if you have discussion if you have a discussion with your um, your, your supplier in that case that you are making the payment in two parts now in this case it's a ten thousand uh, dollar order so I would like to split that payment and um, I would like to for example split it in two halves um, let's say in this one and uh, split the schedule so uh, and I can put a new due date for um, the new payment so I would say okay that's on 22nd of uh, March in that case and I can process and the system will generate um, two schedules in that case you see the total amount is 10,000 and I have generated two different uh, schedules and I can write a note uh, split happened after discussion with the supplier approved Right, so um, you can put a note and, and everybody uh, who is related to accounts receivable and payable who comes into this user interface can see that. Now that's basically a very quick and a nice way to um, track payments and make payments. Now in addition to that we also have um, a BI module as you know, uh, a BI software or a BI system and uh, within that also we have very nice analytics on receivables and payables that we can use. Let me just switch to that. So, so here is basically um, um, the inbuilt BI system where I have the possibility to open a customer's dashboard and a customer's profile, which I can see over here. So I'm being shown here, of course, uh, the basic details about the customer. I can see um, like what are the payment terms agreed with the customer and how many invoices I have raised, how, many, how much the customer has spent so far, what must the cost for those items to me and what was the profitability with that customer. I can also see some other information related to um, like what when was the last order, how much is outstanding, what is the credit limit, how, what are the average days outstanding for this customer since how many days uh, on an average um, like, yeah things are uh, the, the money is outstanding, what are the open orders etc etc. So I see on, on a quick um, note um, I can see all the information which is interesting for me. Also here um, I can see some scoring of the customer for example customer purchase versus my average sales so my average sale per customer is so much and this customer's uh, average is 680 and so I can see how important is that customer for me and uh, average purchase days so on an average after how many days does he do a purchase so and, and certain things interesting of course also to see what are the orders shipments and uh, returns and invoices and accordingly also payment schedules which are the payment schedules which have not yet been paid so paid would be then um, a tick mark over here um, what I also do have is of course an outstanding report um, and which you can also view so I can open a customer outstanding report um, yeah so here we have uh, customer average days outstanding it's, uh, F104 and here for example I could see okay um, uh, if I have some open uh, invoice amount and in this case with this customer it reflects the same data which was there earlier so I can see in this customers case of course I can filter if I have many customers I can filter based on customers customer group sales regions etc and uh, we can see in this case that um, 680 based on um, uh, total um, uh, un unallocated invoices is due of course he could have pay ma made a payment and then uh, which which would be maybe not allocated yet but I see for example against which invoice what is the pending due and um, I can even further zoom into it and see okay what are the payment schedules and which are the payment schedules which have been paid which are due or 
which are not yet due, which will be due in the future. So as you can see, this is going to be due in the future. So accordingly, I have a, a very nice um, accounts payable and receivables in Vienna Advantage, which is on the one hand, of course, the transactional side is very, very user friendly, but also I have all the possibilities re related to reports and analyze my data. You can also see if there are some payments which have been made against post-dated checks or there are payments which already have been made or in this case a bank received uh, which have not yet been allocated to the customer so where you see the total open balance is this much but unallocated invoices since this amount is not yet been allocated um, of course there is something uh, something which uh, um, needs to be yet allocated to the invoices so I can see all that on a single view and analyze my customer as well yeah, that's a quick overview of the Vienna Advantage accounts payable and receivables.